Hi everybody, my name is Pastor Dave Myers. I'm the lead pastor here at Royal Oak Victory Church. And thanks for joining in on the message today. My prayer is that it'll strengthen your faith, encourage your heart, and speak something powerful into your life. If it turns out to be a blessing, would you please consider sharing it with someone else as one of our passions here at ROVC is to get the word out to as many people as possible. And so without further ado, let's jump right into today's message. Good morning, church. Happy New Month. It's the month of August, and we trust God for a great outpouring of His power in our midst as we set out this month in the name of Jesus. All right, so um, I'd like to thank Pastor Dave and the leadership of the church for this great privilege and honor that I have to address the church. I know when you have your senior pastor seated, uh, my legs can be shaking, but uh, you can just say, God will grace you today. Amen. Amen. Great grace. Amen. <laughs> All right. So um, <clears throat> we thank God for the uh, young adults and uh, Cooper and his team. Uh, I think they did a great job. How many of us like that, right? Yeah. It's a good one, right? Young people can do that. All right. So uh, we are in a series of teachings on dinner with Jesus. And uh, in the last few Sundays, we've looked at a number of uh, topics. We have looked at bad company. We have looked at uh, the unexpected guest, as well as the guest list. Uh, no is a beautiful word. And the revolutionary picnic preached by Pastor Sheldon last week. Can we appreciate all those powerful messages we have had? That was a good one. And today we shall consider what we call what is better. What is better. I know Canadians will say what is better. But you see, I like to stay in my comfort zone. So whether you say better or better, we're saying the same thing. What is better? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We live in a world of distractions. And uh, one of the things that gets us distracted these days, cell phones, you know, take a selfie, you know, and stuff like that. So distractions uh, in our current world come from a variety of sources, significantly affecting our ability to focus and be productive. And then we have a few of them here. We have technology and devices. You know, we have social media. Some people on Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all sorts of things that poses distractions. They have their advantages, but they also have their own uh, disadvantages. We have the power of the internet, and then our work environment, as well as home environment. You know, multitasking can also get us distracted. And we have a few other issues that can get us distracted, such as personal issues. When you have stress, you have anxiety, and personal challenges, those can actually occupy the mental space and reduce focus. Uh, health issues or lack of sleep can also be distracted. And of course, envir environmental factors such as noise pollution from traffic, you know, constructions or neighbors. For instance, you are driving on, uh, driving on deer foot and you have the power of focus holding your wheels and probably praying in tongues or singing praises. And somebody just moves right in front of you and he does like this. You are likely to be distracted for one moment, right? <laughs> Power of distraction. You know, our ability to manage these distractions involves being intentional in setting clear boundaries. And they created a conducive work environment and practicing mindfulness and time management techniques. So today we'll look at a portion of the scripture, uh, Dinner with Jesus, uh, where Mary and Martha you know, uh, hosted Jesus and the disciples. And I'll read here Luke chapter 10 uh, from verse 38 to 42. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha, I call her Madame Matt, welcomed them into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he taught. Verse 40, but Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here 
while I do all the work. Tell her to come and help me. Verse 41. The Lord said to her, but the Lord said to her, My dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it, and it will not be taken away from her. Let us pray. Lord, let the breath of life come upon your word today. Let it activate the giftings of God in our lives, and let it set us on the proper track that we may be successful in our dealings and in our activities. We give you praise as you speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, we'll be drawing a few lessons here from the story of Jesus, Madame Matt, the, uh, Mary, and the disciples. And that brings me to my first point. Verse 38 says, as Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. You see the word Jesus and the disciples. What does that tell us? It brings us to our first point. The power of teamwork. Jesus and the disciples. Mary and Martha. Peter, James, and John. Priscilla and Aquila. Can you follow me? Now, it says here the power of teamwork. Now, this village was Bethany, and they needed to pass through it before getting to Jerusalem for their intended purpose, which was preaching the gospel. So Jesus and his disciples were the ones involved in this journey, not Jesus alone. Was there a possibility that Jesus could have embarked on that journey alone? Yes. Did he have the capacity to do so? Yes. Does he have the ability to do so? Yes. But how did he choose to do it? He did it through the power of what? Teamwork. Somebody say teamwork. teamwork. Let me announce to your neighbor. Say teamwork. teamwork. All right. So teamwork makes the team work. So Jesus and the disciples, they were on that journey. So there is a place for solitude and there is also a place for teamwork in life and ministry. And I said here, teamwork makes the dream work. We have several teams in church, and I'll go over that. Few examples of people who worked in, uh, in teams in scriptures. We have Peter, James, and John. They were there with Jesus at the Mount of Transfiguration. We could also see Aaron and all. They lifted the hands of Moses, and victory was established at the battlefront. In Exodus chapter 17, verse 12, the Bible says, Moses' hands soon became tired, so he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Hor found a stone for him to sit on, the power of teamwork. Then they stood on each side of Moses, holding up his hands, so his hands held steady until sunset. And as long as the hands of Moses were up, Joshua was winning the battle. Will there be people in our office today who will hold the hands of Pastor Dave? Who will hold the hands of the leadership of the church? Who will hold everyone together such that there is collective victory? We also have the Peter, I mean the example of Peter and John when they went to the beautiful gate and then there was a man that was raised there. After the man, you know, the man was, the, the man became whole. There was, you know, pandemonium, they you know, got them arrested. Why would you do that? And then they got them arrested. They got them beaten. And then when they were released, something happened in Acts 4.23. The Bible says, as soon as the missionaries were free to go, they went back to their own group. Somebody said their own group. King James says they went back to their own company and they told them everything the religious leaders had said. So their group was their company. Now, we have several groups in church that can be a blessing to us here at ROVC. We have the push team, we have the men's group, we have the women's group, the young adults. You see, you know, the young adults, they blessed us this morning. Most of us seniors cannot rule like that, but uh, we can try. <laughs> Only the young adults can do that. We have the ushering team, we have the connect group. So which group do you belong in church? Do not be a lone ranger. Don't walk in solitude working teams. So one of the things God is saying to us today, if you attend this church, you do not have a place where you serve, please join a team and join the volunteer force. And as you do that, God will bless you for it. Let's say a few quotes on 
teamwork. I can do the things you cannot. You can do the things I cannot. Together we can do great things. Hallelujah. Alone we can do so little. Together we can do so much. Coming together is a beginning. Staying together is progress. And working together is success. And of course, the nice thing about teamwork is that you always have others on your side. There's a song that says, I have a very big God do. He's always by my side. A very big God do. By my side, by my side. God is on my side. Jesus is on your side. The brethren are also on your side. We cannot be defeated. Together, we achieve more. Teamwork. I go to number two. What was my first point? The power of what? Teamwork. Number two, the prowess of continuity. The prowess of continuity. Now look at verse 38. As Jesus and his disciples continued on their way, what did they do? They continued. The power of continuity. They continued on their way to Jerusalem. And of course, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into a home. So Jesus and his disciples continued on their way in spite of the rejection awaiting them in Jerusalem. The scripture says, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples indeed. God expects continuity. When we give our lives to Christ, we continue serving him. When we come to ROVC, we continue serving the Lord. We don't stop. So did Jesus and the disciples, did they face any challenge on their way? Yes. Did they continue on their journey? Yes. Was there any possibility of discouragement as they journeyed? A lot of possibilities. Did they continue? Yes. What should we do when we are on a journey? In a journey of career progression, writing professional exams, volunteering in church, you know, a journey of spiritual growth, we're encouraged to continue. Don't stop. Never give up. You are here, maybe you're a medical doctor back home. You have written Canadian medical exams two, three times and you have failed. And then you say, I'm not going to write again. My charge for you today, buy that form, enroll for that exam, double your preparation, join PUSH team. <laughs> Because I'm a member of Fush, gather more support, write that exam again. I can assure you, your testimony will be next. Yeah. Help me announce to your neighbor, say, don't give up. Look at him eyeball to eyeball, don't give up. Don't give up. I will not give up. You want to give up your marriage? Don't give up. There is hope. There is hope for a tree, Job 14, 14. If a tree is cut down, what does the Bible say? It will do what? It will sprout Again, rejoice not over me, O my enemy. If I fall, I will do what? I will rise up again. If I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light unto me. Don't give up. Don't quit. With Jesus in the team, there is a great empowerment to succeed. Quitters don't win, and winners don't quit. Continue in the way, and the word of the Lord don't stop. Don't stop doing good. Don't stop volunteering. Don't stop serving. Don't stop. What's my second point? The power of continuity. What's the first one? The power of what? Teamwork. Number two, the prowess of continuity. Let's go to number three. The pursuit of hospitality. Let's read verse 38 here. As Jesus and the disciples continued on their way to Jerusalem. They came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed them into her home. I call her Madam Matt. Martha, Madam Matt. I know these days we only name our children Mary. Nobody names uh, Martha. But let's see a few points about Madam Matt here today. The house was called Martha's house. Madam Matt's house with a very big inscription. Probably. And then as she probably was a widow, she was the housekeeper. So I see four things here about Madame Matt. Number one, she had a house. Two, the name of the house was called what? Madame Matt's house. Three, she was a widow. 
And then number four, she was a housekeeper. Can we clap for Madam Matt? <laughs> she had four titles. Even myself here, I have four titles. But today's service is not about me. It is about Madam Matt and what Jesus can do in our lives. Praise God. <laughs> she was a housekeeper. All our women here, they are good housekeepers. God bless you. All our mothers here, those who are hardworking, those who are not hardworking too, God bless you. You become more hardworking. <laughs> so let's see a few points about Madam Matt before I run out of time. <laughs> Point A, she did not only welcome Jesus, rather she welcomed them into her home. Who are the them? Jesus and the disciples. How many of them? We're not told. But we assume Jesus and the 12. Are you with me? So she honored Jesus and the disciples. She, was, she didn't say, Jesus, come in. Disciples, stay outside. She wasn't selective. She wasn't divisive. She didn't look down on the disciples. She honored them as well. Let's not just honor Pastor Dave and say, Pastor Sheldon, Pastor Cooper, you are the lower pastors. Once we see Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave, we're good. And then we make a God out of Pastor Dave. We honor and respect all our pastors. Yes or no? Yes. Can we give a shout of praise to God? <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Dave, we celebrate you. No division in church. There's no I belong to Paul, I belong to Apollos. We all belong to Christ. And we honor the servants of God. Point number B. She did not welcome them outside the home. She welcomed them inside. She was fully given to hospitality and genuine love. Do you see that? Brought them inside her home. She didn't just stop outside. Point number three. Have you welcomed Jesus into your heart? Today will be a good day for this. You can pick up the yes package and speak, you know, with one of our pastors at the end of the service. Jesus is awaiting your decision. You know why? Madam Matt brought Jesus into her house. She brought Jesus into her domain, into her territory. If there was sickness in her house, what would have happened? Sickness would have disappeared. If there was poverty, disease, failure, stagnation in her home, what would have happened? With the entrance of Jesus, those challenges would have gone away. Give Jesus a place in your heart. Allow Jesus to come in. Pastor Sherry and Marie will be waiting to receive you after the service if you want to make a decision to follow the Lord. Point D, Madam Matt spent time, money, and energy on hospitality without minding the cost of doing so. In kingdom service and family relations, we are expected to give our time, talent, treasure, and then our tears. Those are things we are expected to give to God. I imagine what will have been running through the heart of Madam Matt. You know, the other time when Lazarus died, it was Jesus that came. <laughs> but now, with 12 disciples, and he, she welcomed all of them into the house. That means the amount of food they had in the house was going to go down, yes or no? So that means a, another trip to a superstore for groceries, Another trip to Walmart for groceries. The budgetary allocation for the month was going to be altered. But because she was a giver. Madam Matt was a giver. She gave her house. She gave her time to cook. She gave her talent. She gave her training like the young adults here. They gave a lot to bless us here this morning. And the Lord bless you as you give. Don't lock the door of your heart. Don't lock the door of your pocket. You know, some believers, they can give their time and everything to God. They can give everything, but not anything in their pocket, not anything from their credit card, not anything from their sweat. So if you have not been given, I know we give in our office, we are generous people. But in case you have not been given, give it. Today there's a word for you. Start giving. If Mother Matt gave, you should give. And as you give, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Now, Martha spent time, money, and energy. And of course, Martha, Madam Matt identified with Jesus and entertained him in Bethany near Jerusalem, not minding the hazard this will pose as many people rejected Christ in Jerusalem. You know, if people rejected Christ in Jerusalem, Bethany was just two miles away from Jerusalem, so the lifestyle and culture will be the same. 
So if they rejected Christ, it is, there's a possibility that Mata Matt will also suffer rejection. She saw that, but she said, no, I am bringing Jesus into my house. Praise God. She had commendable respect for Jesus. If you love him, you will honor him. What again can we say about Madame Matt? She had commendable care for the household affairs. In John 11 verse 9, you know, many people came to their house when Lazarus died. I believe Madame Matt would have also entertained them, even though she was bereaved at that time. Let's not let our challenges and failures deter us. In verse 40, Martha came to Jesus. Can you imagine? She came to Jesus. Brethren, when you are happy, what do you do? Come to Jesus. When you are sad, what do you do? Come to Jesus. James chapter 5, verse 13. Is any sick among you? Is any merry among you? He said, let him sing psalms. He said, is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over him. Anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. So is any challenge among you come to Jesus? So Martha came to Jesus. It doesn't matter whether things are good or bad, we come to Jesus. Even though our utterance wasn't justifiable before him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And we know that whoever comes to him must believe that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Come to Jesus. And my last point on that, she demonstrated boldness as she queried Jesus. You know, when she came to Jesus, you know one thing she told Jesus to do? He said, tell her to come and help me. In other words, I am distracted. Tell Mary also to be distracted. Can you imagine? You, you come to Jesus. Is it not to learn from him? Is it not to pray to him? Now she came to Jesus. She was instructing Jesus. How many of us, when we go to God, we just instruct him? And say, www.enter.com. And say, Jesus, go. I send you an errand. No. When you come to Jesus, you come to learn. You don't come to Jesus to instruct him. Praise God. Point number four. The promptness of sharing and teaching. When they came to the house of Jesus, what did he do? He did not delay. He started sharing. When you appear in a place, do not delay. Share your heart. Share your thoughts display the fact that you are a Christian, display the character of God. Of course, Jesus did not procrastinate because he knew at that time that procrastination was the assassination of destination. But you see here, Jesus started preaching. He started teaching. And what did Mary do? She sat down to listen. And the Bible says that which she has heard from Jesus will not be taken away from her. Any opportunity to share, please share. When I get to work, I say, how was your weekend? Oh, my weekend was good. I preach in church on Sunday. What did you preach? Then I download to them. So you asked me, can somebody challenge me that I preach in church? You asked me what I did over the weekend, and I told you. And one of the things you can tell them is, I mentioned in church, come to Jesus. And that is something you want to hear. Have I preached at work? I only told them what they asked me. What did you do over the weekend? I told them in church, come to Jesus. And if you also come to Jesus, it will help you. Now, some of you takes me to my point number five. I saw you smiling. It shows you are listening. My point number five, the power of listening. Hallelujah. <laughs> are you scared? <laughs> it tells me you are listening, brethren. <laughs> the power of listening. Look at verse 39. Our sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. What did Mary do? She sat. Excuse me, what does it mean to sit? To sit, to sit means to do what? To sit. <laughs> it means to settle down. It means to, to avoid all distractions and then to be ready to listen and be ready to take in information. Last week, Pastor Sheldon shared with us when Jesus was to perform a miracle, when all of them were hungry, what was the first thing he told them to do? Sit down. And then as they were giving the bread, it was multiplying because they sat. If you want to build a tower, what do you do? Sit down first. So Mary sat. If we sit, we overcome distractions, God helps us. 
So Mary paid rapt attention and listened. Mary was intentional about hearing Jesus. Mary was hungry to learn. Matthew 5, 6, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Bible says they shall be what? They shall be filled. Mary was hungry. She was hungry for Jesus, for the word of God. Come unto me, all ye that are labored, all ye who are weary and burdened. He said, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and do what? Learn from me. He said, and then you will find rest for your soul. My sixth point, the powerful grip of distraction. The powerful grip of distraction. Look at verse 40. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. I like that, big dinner. I think I should be part of Jesus' entourage for that big dinner. And for those of us with, uh, you know, parabola shape, you know, we can actually do justice to that big dinner. But Martha, Madam Matt was distracted because of the big dinner. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work? Tell her to come and help me. Can you imagine? Let's look at the grip of distraction. Mary was distracted. I mean, sorry, Madam Matt was distracted. Sister Mary learned at the feet of Jesus. To be distracted means to be careful and troubled about many things. To be pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. When you are pulled away from God's presence, that is distraction. When you are pulled away from what you set out to do, that is distraction. She was upset about all the work she had to do. She was thinking of herself, saying that I cannot do this work alone. You think about God, you think about his person, not think about yourself, not think about yourself. Think about Jesus. She was busy and distracted with all her serving responsibilities. And of course, she was overly occupied and too busy. Brethren, are you distracted by undue attachment to screens and social media? Distracted by addiction? Distracted by ungodly friends? We need to be intentional just like Mary. Don't be distracted. Do you see that even when you are driving and some people are crossing the walk, they are crossing the road, you see them, they are crossing and they are like this. What do you say to that? They are distracted. Please don't be distracted. Less attention to the phone. You see everybody, young people and old people, selfie all the time, right? <laughs> please don't be distracted. It's not wrong to take pictures, but please don't be distracted. Our last point for today, the efficacy of focus. The efficacy of focus. That's the power of one thing. But the Lord said to her, my dear Madam Matt, that's not in the Bible. The Bible says, my dear Martha. <laughs> but according to Femi Ali, my dear Madam Matt, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. Can you imagine the entire episode? Jesus came out and, say, and said, ladies and gentlemen, here's the report of the exercise we just conducted in the house of Martha. Here's the report card. And the report card simply says, Madam Matt, you are worried and upset over all these details. Can you imagine that? That was Jesus' you know, summary of the lifestyle of Martha. Can there be somebody in this assembly today and Jesus is saying, Madam A, Brother B, the summary of your life is that you are worried and upset over many things. And he's saying there is only one thing that is worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. So we talk about one thing. David said in Psalm 27 verse 4, he said, one thing have I desired and that will I seek after. That I will behold the beauty of the Lord that I may inquire at thy temple, that I may dwell in thy presence all the days of my life. David said, one thing, I want to follow Jesus. I want to serve Jesus. I want to live with Jesus. One thing. Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, 
of the tribe of Benjamin. And then he went forward and said, you know all those things that are gained for me, I count them to be lost. I count all things but dung for the excellency of Christ for which I suffer loss. He said, I count my, not myself to have apprehended. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, reaching forward to those things which are before me. One thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. Forget the failures of the past. Forget the challenges of the past. One thing, remember what the future holds. And then we dwell in the realm of the possibility of the future. Why? Because the scripture gives us a clear picture from the scripture of our future. That is the power of the scripture. It tells you a proper prediction of your future. One thing, I forget my failures. I forget my disappointments. I forget the failures and the challenges I have had. One thing, I believe in God that he holds my future in his hands and he will transform my life. Is there somebody here you have been disappointed, battered and beaten by the issues of life? One thing, your past does not define you. Your future defines you through the word of God because your future is in the scripture. Mary said, there's only one thing and that's what I want. And Jesus said, there is only one thing worth being concerned about. And Mary discovered it. Mary did what? Discovered it. Will there be one thing in your life today that you want to focus on this week? One thing, your marriage. One thing, your son. One thing, your daughter. One thing, even the way you comport yourself at work. One thing, do you serve in church? There may be one thing you want to consider and the Lord will give us grace to do that. So this morning we have looked at seven points. We have looked at number one, the power of teamwork. Number two, the prowess of continuity. Number three, the pursuit of hospitality. Number four, the promptness of sharing and teaching. Number five, the power of listening. And number six, the powerful grip of distraction. And number seven, the efficacy of focus. So my question to you is this, what is your focus for this week? What one thing would you trust God to help you achieve as we move on from here? Do you want to deal with distractions? Do you have distractions you need to overcome? Or do you want to stay on the power of distraction and neglect the power of focus? Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you for the ministry of your word this morning. I pray for everyone saying, I want to give because Madame Matt give, gave. Lord, the power to give, let it be released upon us right now in the name of Jesus. Madame Matt allowed Jesus into our house. Everyone saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Lord, I pray you will accept them today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we are praying that even as we set out this week and this month, you will help us to maintain the power of focus and at the end, your name will be glorified in our lives. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the message today and I hope that it lifted and encouraged you in some way. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, we would love to know about it. And the best way to do that, to let us know, is by heading over to our website at rovc.ca and clicking on the tab that says connect with us. Also, if this message was a blessing to you, we'd love it if you could get the word out by liking and subscribing or even giving to our ministry. If you're interested in making a donation, you can do so by heading again to our website and clicking on the Give tab. Again, thanks for joining us and may God richly bless you.